guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching episode two of season five of The Expanse. So definitely episode one. Um, it didn't um, blow me out of the water. It eased me back in. Of course, we always have our horrible reunions like Bobby and Alex having a tiff. Him not really understanding <laughs> why she's upset, but like she's kind of like, will you leave? you know, your, your wife and son alone. Like, they don't want you. They don't want you around. How many times do they have to tell you no? Um, let me tell you, people who are persistent like that, who do not take no for an answer, they normally have to learn the hard way. And I don't want Alex to have to learn the hard way. He, he could try to have a relationship with his son, um, but uh, definitely the whole, like, invite me in and let's chat. Nah, nah, that day's past, Alex. That day's past. Um, I, I, I do want Alex and Bobby to work together. I feel like, um, especially him having the razor back, which I thought was like really cool, like to, to see that again. I don't know why they still have the razor back. I don't know how he still owns that I, or uh, how, how somebody in the group is allowed to have that ship. Um, they did say when he went to land that they're like, yeah, if you landed in the Rossi, mm. <laughs> or, or if he had tried, maybe they wouldn't have let him. I think that that was actually what was said. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering if he's going to help Bobby with this, uh, syndicate. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> the, the black market weapons dealers. Um, she's, she's doing it for Christian. She's losing contacts, but it seems like she still has somewhat of a network that of, of people that she can kind of get information from. And, and it's in, it's all to find Marco. <laughs> Speaking of Christian, she had a little bit of an interaction with Amos, which was delightful. Uh, it felt flirty on his end, on her end. She's just like, son, uh, I, I, I really like their interactions, but I, I really like that, you know, she wanted to know what he was doing and then like asks, like, you're not planning on killing anybody because I'm not going to bail you out. Like, that's something that a mom says. Like, <laughs> I mean, I already know he has mommy issues. Um, so I am, I'm not surprised that, one, he's drawn to Christian, who is a badass woman, you know, like, and, and he seems to be fairly attracted to her. I don't think that that really means much when it comes to Amos, because he's Amos, like, like, you want to go? Let's go. Whether it's a fight or whether it's a tussle, if you know what I mean. Uh, it, 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 so I feel like when he's... Looking at Christian, he sees a motherly figure, um, but not in the way that we see a motherly figure. Obviously, he's had a way different life, uh, which I know, again, this episode that we're going to watch today is called Churn. So I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> now, with Holden, he is still, uh, um, I almost said Tachi. <laughs> Ain't that a throwback? He's on Tycho waiting for the Rasanate to be prepared. Um, I don't know if he's going to charge in and save Naomi from whatever is awaiting her when she um, gets to Palace Station to look for Philip, but um, I, I feel like he is that white knight and he will ride in on the Rasanate to help save Naomi, um, or at least help her some way, shape, or form. I mean, she doesn't really need saving most of the time, but like backup is always great. <laughs> and you don't want anyone backing you up if they're not Alex, Amos, or Holden. Those are fantastic choices. Or Bobby. Mm -hmm. Or Drummer. You know what? Naomi has a lot of people that she can choose from that like could help help her in a time of need. Now, with Holden being on Tycho Station, not only is he around Fred Johnson, who is like trying to convince Holden to like forget about the protomolecule, forget about all this, retire. Go have a farm. You have love. You have a woman. You know, go build her a future. Um, that's not really. It's it's really not in the cards for them to even go to Earth. So like the whole farm thing is kind of you know a, a non-starter anyway. But I don't think that like the life that they would want to lead would be settling down. I I, I just I don't see that being. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I always see Naomi wanting to be in service of the belt, and I always see Holden supporting her. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It, it really is a beautiful thing. 
But I do know that he's probably going to be helping Monica with something or Monica is going to be around. And I didn't like her so much in season three. And it was mostly the manipulation of like trying to come on to Amos um, to try to get information from him. And I don't really like reporters in the way that they do like their their investigative journalism. Really, it's just being nosy and intrusive and I don't like it. And I'm very protective of these people. Now, uh, I know a lot of people love Monica, which I'm sure I'll see. Um, I'll, I, but if she if she gets flirty again, I'm gonna bust a face. I, I can't bust a face. It's through a screen. But just so you know, I disapprove of that a hundred percent. Naomi is our girl forever. So him talking to Fred about the artifact and kind of like explaining like, like just because you have the proto molecule, like that doesn't really mean anything because like, look at what it's doing on these other worlds. Um, and, and I'm interested to know about the aliens that were able to destroy the proto molecule even on Illis, but like, like the creators, like they have to be powerful. And I didn't think that we were going to get both of those stories with Marco and, and the artifact, but here we are insane. I, it's a, it's an embarrassment of riches. I, I didn't think we'd get them. And here we are with both of them. Now, speaking of Marco, you know, Philip kind of being radicalized and following, you know, his father's footsteps you know, Naomi is going to have such a hard time, you know, it was like the first time she saw him in a long time. And like I said, I feel like she has maybe an idealized version of him in her mind. And I think that when she actually meets him or sees him, it's not going to be that. And it's going to be a tough pill to swallow. But I also don't know, like, if she's going to come face to face with Marco, I feel like they loved each other. I feel like they loved each other a lot. I don't think it's a Holden type of love, but I, I definitely feel like there might be uh, still, I don't want to say fire, but maybe some chemistry that might still be there. Um, and uh, I, I know she won't, but at the same time, I also don't know if I know. Um, with... Marco, the last shot that we saw of him, there was a rock that was 12 days out. And I don't know where necessarily it was going, but I thought maybe Earth because it looked like continents. Again, I can't read, you know, those maps or those schematics or the vector things or whatever. Like it could be, you know, rocks in orbit somewhere. Um, but uh, wherever it is, it's 12 days. And um, it's got Mars stealth tech on it. So it will be undetectable. Now, if it goes to Earth. One, Amos is on Earth. But two, Christian is at least on Luna. And I don't think Nancy Gao is equipped to handle Marco at all. It was nice to kind of see that like like people are leaving Mars. They're going through the gates. You know, the that, um, unemployment on Earth has gone down, that there are jobs available. I, you know, like there's a relief that's happening. Um, and in the opening credits, they show like all these ships coming in and out of all these gates. And like, that's amazing. That is so amazing. Like, I, I would like to know more about that. But again, I don't think she's equipped to handle wartime stuff. Maybe like she's equipped to handle the more like uh, humanitarian aid or, uh, you know, the economics of running a planet, solar system, solar systems. Um, but I, I, I don't think she can handle Marco. Now, I don't know where we're going with Amos other than Earth, and uh, he's got to go back home. Um, I don't know, because obviously Lydia would be the person that I would think would have passed, and that's the affairs he's trying to settle. But I, I feel like Lydia owned a whorehouse, or she ran a prostitution home, or something. I don't know. Um, looking forward to that. Now... Uh, Amos being back home and then the, the fact that he took a mob boss's name, I don't think he's going into a place that's, um, home sweet home. I don't think that there's a lasagna waiting on the table for him. I don't think he's going to be welcomed with open arms. Uh, I feel like there's going to be a lot of history that's surrounding him. Um, and like, you know, he doesn't get intimidated by that stuff. 
And so he's probably not worried about it, but I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. The, the more I learn about him, the more, um, my, my heart and my sympathy and my empathy and, and my crush grows again. Um, <laughs> he's a TV character. <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I don't know, are we going to get drummer? Like she's in the opening credits. Like, I don't know if it's Cara G or Cara G, but can, can, can we, can we find out how she's feeling? Like, does she know about Ashford? Like, is there a, a vengeance that she's planning? Like, give me something. I need to know what's going on with our drummer. Because my heart hurts thinking about it. And I need closure over Ashford. I need somebody else to mourn Ashford. Because I had to do it by myself. <laughs> so I need somebody else to either be pissed, to be sad, to have a fire lit underneath of them. I'm not sure, but we need drummer. I need drummer. <laughs> okay, guys. Nervous, excited, and uh, I've still got some rosé. So uh, we're going to enjoy this episode. Let's get into it. Oh no, the bottle. It's empty. Oh god, why is there a plant floating through space? Oh god, what did they do? <gasps> Molina, Captain. Marco! Yes, girl! Don't worry about what I want. Worry about what I am due. Who are you to tell us who we can kill? I am Kamina Drummer. You respect my claim, or you die and become a story I tell the next captain. Maybe that, or maybe we finish. Oh, okay. They're not gonna make it easy. What will be the fun in that? <laughs> oh, my girl! I love space shit. At least give them a chance to be polite. We will. But if they target lock us again, kill them. Mm. She don't fuck around. Mm. They're probably gonna die. You can't be happy in space. Unless you're holding her Naomi. You got a fun ship, drummer. Go tell everyone I am in control of this area now. Yeah, boss man. Oh. <laughs> And we did good. Inner attention is measured by belter corpses. Tamina, mm. do you have a bounty on this ship? Tynan? It's the Tynan. Place Ashford's ship. I never thought I'd actually find it. I imagine they probably never found his body either. I'm super excited that we got Luna the last episode as well. I've been waiting to go to Luna. It took five seasons. I think it was mentioned in the first episode of season one. Ooh, written by Dan and Ty. Every time it says that there's an episode written by them, I get excited. Baltimore. Okay, Amos. Oh, wow. Okay. Future Earth kind of looks like Back to the Future. In the future. You know what I mean? <laughs> Great shots. It feels like a different show. Every season feels like a different show with the same people. Like, just improvements on everything. It's just like people wandering around. Something I can do for you. <laughs> Just Maybe. keep staring at each other. Do you recognize him? Timothy. I don't like it. 
Lydia was always waiting for you to turn up. It was Lydia. Come on. Timothy. Does he have a tattoo on his arm that says that? I sent a screenshot to Xander like months ago of him strangling the camera guy. And I was like, what is this tattoo? I'm Charles. Amos. Were you good to her, Charles? Mm. It's a great question. Gets right to it. We were good to each other, boy. How did she die? She spent every waking moment hoping to see you again. You show up now and that's all you want to know is... Don't, Amos. Tell me. It was an aneurysm. In her sleep. Peaceful, at least. You need to beat me up to make yourself feel better about abandoning her here. Just do it. Was she happy? Very important question. I don't know. I think so. But there was so much she kept to herself. What am I going to do? How the fuck am I going to go on without her? Mm -hmm. T, T sounds great. <laughs> I knew some of what her life was before. She just did what she had to do to survive. Well, you can't judge someone by what they do to make money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can. <laughs> Marjorie. You were in that world too, right? When you got old enough, the Johns didn't want you. So they started you working muscle. But she knew that they would use you up till there was nothing left. Float to the top or sink to the bottom. Everything in the middle is a churn. <laughs> she told me that. She saved you? No one really saves anyone. Oh, I miss. She taught me how to save myself. <laughs> Thank you for being with her. No, I'm going to miss this place. Why are you leaving? It's not mine. It was hers. But now that she's gone, the guy who owns it, he wants it back. Uh-oh. What was his name? Eric. Stop packing. Amos is going to go save the day. Can't save anybody. My ass. Amos does it all the time. You know what your problem is? Hmm. Oh, my dick's too big? Crow the fuck up, man. Yeah, no it's shit. Serious. The belt protecting and policing itself is a good thing. You know what your problem is? No, what? Tell me. You think that if someone's an underdog, that means they're the good guy. I don't particularly like that guy. The two interactions I've seen, not a fan. When is that gonna be? 12. Hours? 18 if I do it perfect. Six if you don't mind dying later on. <laughs> I'll take 18. 18 sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, well. Holden, I know that you're avoiding me, and I just want to let you know that I understand, really. I do. But also... I haven't been completely honest with you. Oh, imagine that. Sure. <laughs> but it proves that someone is going after the proto molecule. Meet me and I will tell you about it. Just you. Just him. He's the only one who can go anyway. But there's really nothing I can do. You're going to end up getting involved, Holden. But it proves that someone is going after the proto molecule. You can't fight it. 
Oh, Holden being Holden. Why is that room open? Oh, shit. Oh, is that a bloody handprint? They wouldn't bring her back just to kill her off, would they? Fred, we have a problem. Big problem. Come in. Nice, Bobby. Howdy. <clears throat> you alone. I wasn't listening. I'm a shitty friend. Amos says we're not a shitty five friend. times a week, and <laughs> I know he'll take a bullet for me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I already have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're angry, and it's not because of something I did. Well, it wasn't until now. Hmm. Tell him. Tell him! Wait. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I've been buying for months. Avasarala is funding me. <laughs> You're working undercover for Earth to infiltrate Mars? Avasarala is the only one I know for sure who isn't in on it. I've got a possible lead on stealth missiles. Oh, that's what she was talking about. Those are first strike weapons. Anyone buying one of those wants to attack a planet. Now yeah. you see why Avasarella is funding me. Oh, shit. <laughs> Emil Silvertier? No, that's a mistake. You know him? Yeah. You tried talking to him? Well, I'll walk up <laughs> and say, excuse me, sir, are you illegally selling weapons to the belt? Alex can. Maybe not that. <laughs> We don't travel in the same circles. He'll talk to me. Yes, he will. Is this Eric's corner? Do you work for him? I don't know any Eric. Hey man, why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> <laughs> or I'll just whoop your ass. I understand you're just doing your job, but I need a friend who will take a message to Eric from me. Do you want to be my friend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eric's gonna kill you. I thought you and I were friends. <laughs> I've issued a temporary lock on all the docks. I'm gonna keep digging on this end and find out who scrubbed that video. It's probably you. I don't trust him. Hey! We can talk! You wanna talk? I mean, we know Monica can talk, so I, I don't think she can talk her way out of it, but girl can talk. Uh, I saw you were uh, talking about the ring gates. I was out there. It'd be an honor to buy you a coffee. I can give you my first hand account. You pilot a stolen Martian ship for an Earther captain. Oh, God. I don't think we have much to say to each other. Ugh. It's been a long term. He's very tired. It's not you. He's cranky. You sure. Sure as hell seemed like me. <laughs> he also doesn't like being upstaged. If you have an opening in your coffee schedule, maybe I could take you up on it. I mean, if that's not... Presuming. Oh, um. First hand account. No, and no date. it's not. Find out why he's here. Already on it? Hmm. Is it because she's actually curious or because she's actually wanting to do stuff for Savater? Why does this little boy keep getting beat up? Eric says to come with me. Take your muffin. Oh. It's a kindness you don't expect from Amos. Asteroid spotter. It won't spot it with a stealth tech, though. I didn't even spot it with a stealth tech. Mother? <laughs> Ashanti. Mother? Mm, I wanted to say goodbye before we left. I didn't know she had a daughter. Father misses you. I know he won't say it, but he does. What I'm doing here is still important. Arjun understands that. That and he declined the offer to go. If the buyer is Marco Inaros, and one of his ships destroys the Hesami, it suggests... Admiral Delgado, you're familiar with those reports? Was it an Inaros ship? 50-50. Higher than that? Not much. Christian, you're on Luna to do a job. It isn't this. Understood. Good. Now, let's get back to work. That's exactly how she would have responded to that if she were in Nancy's position. 
you could lose control of the station. I already lost control. I'm trying to get it back, guys. That's not the way to do it. Even if I could find her, I can't track down who took her and run this at the very same time. Guys! What'd you do? There's a button I pushed it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's really how you go through life, isn't it? Look, That's what I would there's do. There's a signal coming in. Her eye camera. That's right. Monica? Not on the record. Okay. But what if she opens something to like the outside? I watched a video on how they film in zero gravity. How oh, they film zero gravity? Very interesting. No! No! Okay, just push off the back wall. Yep. Yeah. Oh god. Jesus. Uh, you're losing oxygen. Shit. Yeah, you didn't know where that was going. Oh. My god. Oh. Hold it. Oh, oh. Tell me you found something. I got one that's warmer than the others. Might need an atmosphere inside. Oh no. I'm starting to like have a hard time breathing because she's having a hard time breathing. But like, what do they do when they find her? We don't need to ventilate her air while we're saving her life. You know I work in space, right? <laughs> oh, so cool. Did not think Monica rescue mission from a space container off a Tycho station by Holden was going to be a thing. Is she in there? This is carrying live soil. That's why it had atmosphere. This isn't the right container. Uh-uh. Interested in meeting this Eric character. Those three guys, my money's still on Amos. These six guys, my money's still on Amos. Oh. Okay, so Eric's rich. Oh, well funded. Amos Burton wants to talk. That's weird, right? Everyone knows Amos Burton's been dead for, what, a couple decades? Interesting. Around here, there's only one Amos Burton. What the fuck are you doing, Timmy? Oh, Timmy. We had a deal. I'm gonna need to change that deal. Fuck you. Where's his hand? You killed Burton for me instead of killing me for him. You got his name and a way off the planet. I made sure Lydia was taken care of her whole life. The husband? He keeps the house. And once he's died of natural causes, you can do whatever you want. But Lydia would not want him sleeping in an alley, so I don't either. That's all this is. Yes. Oh, well, shit. You should have just said so. He did. You scared the fuck out of me coming to my place like this. Yeah, the old guy can stay. I don't give a shit. Hang on, we'll drink on it. What happened to his hand? Well, what happened to all of them? Um, reach for the baseball? Eric, you don't have to test me. I'm not here to take anything that belongs to you. Okay. Eric must be somebody slightly important to him and Lydia. Was he part of the thing that Lydia had going on with the Johns? God damn, that's good. <laughs> that's not going to be it, though. You've changed. That's good. Do you remember when we were just street trash? Sitting on the docks, watching the shuttles leave? Wishing we were on him. I'll never forget that. You did good, brother. 
Like brother, Next time brother. you go up the well, don't come back. I love you, and I miss you, I do. But show your face in my city again, and I'm putting you down. It's good seeing you again, Eric. Like brother, brother? Paradna? Bro? Or like brother? Wow, he had a brother. You gonna be fine, Monica. Holden gonna find you. Maybe not. How did I get to a point where I'm concerned about Monica's life? You just got a dose of hyperoxygenated blood. Packs a wallet. You never would have found your dad put a hole in your seal, so good job. I'm not dead. You're not. How many times has Holden saved your life? Public floggings go. I've seen worse. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having my back in there. She goes out of her way to humiliate me. Shocking. Mm. After the kindness you showed her when your positions were reversed. <laughs> she should thank me for toughening her up. Yeah, maybe. Let the young ones grew up for a while. The kids will be along shortly to push them out to pasture. Fuck that. <laughs> I love her. It's fun to see her in this position, though. When was the last time a Belta pirate took down a ship in the inner planets? I don't remember one. Because it's the most dangerous place in the system for them to operate. Maybe not piracy then. Maybe something to do with the mission the Asami was on. That would be the place to start. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Is it working? Yep, it sure is. Yeah, what's up with this kid? When you're hurt, hurting others is easy. It takes strength to choose not to. When life has not treated you with kindness, doing the right thing anyway always takes strength. When you can even tell what the right thing is. I'm really hoping this isn't a flashback that Amos is I having. I love you, Timothy. But I'm not righteous. I can't teach you to be that. Oh, Maybe yeah. you and I can imagine a version of me that is good. <laughs> I'll pretend to be her. You can pretend to love me enough to listen. Maybe that's enough for people like us. He looks just like Amos. Hey, what are you doing on my dock, old man? Old man? I mean, no. Yeah, whatever, asshole. Yeah, I'd walk away too. He's terrifying sometimes. See that look in his eye? Chrissy, I'm gonna need a favor. I'm getting ready to go back to the ship and I'm not coming back to Earth ever. But there's someone that I should see first. And I'm gonna need your help arranging it. Who? If it's Melba? If it's Melba slash Clarissa slash Peaches, I'm just gonna have to swallow my pride and take what's given to me because obviously 
Um, it's a piece of his story and it's important regardless. Some people don't have great childhoods. I had a great childhood, so it really breaks my heart when I think about what Amos has gone through to become the Amos that we know and love. I knew this episode would get me. Obviously, the title name being The Churn, I knew that it was going to be an Amos heavy episode, and I knew it'd be about Lydia. I'm glad I got that name right. <laughs> I was like, Linda? I don't think it's Lydia. But just how he behaved with Charles at first, and then you saw him soften, and he kind of realized, like, like this this person that's before him, like, knew Lydia and loved Lydia and they had a life together and he couldn't say that she was or was not happy that's only for Lydia to have said to Amos but or to Timothy I love that he decided to make sure that Charles had a home you guys know how I feel about people not having a home oh. <laughs> And I didn't catch that it was a flashback, the the kid and the, the woman. I didn't catch it until they were sitting there and I was like, oh, holy shit. He's remembering his time on Earth. He's remembering the times that he had to go through what he went through with his mother. I don't know if that was Lydia or if that was his mother. But the fact that like and I, I don't know necessarily if that is a biological brother, if that is a brother in bonding like through trauma and life experiences and you know, because they were, he was, Eric was talking about them, like watching the ships go up. And then he says, I never want to see you again. Don't ever come back here. I'll put you down. Man. Amos is such a great character. One, because it's not like Holden or Naomi, where there's a lot of emotion that's being exerted and a lot of storytelling and a lot of like, like this narrative that's being told to us, like like sometimes they have exposition that gives them like a lot of like character building because they have those moments where they're just saying these monologues and it's just like really great. Amos doesn't have those moments. And so when we get bits and pieces about Amos and like even when he was talking to Prax and like Prax was like surprised at what was going on on Ganymede and it was just like, oh, my God, like they're killing people for this, that and the other thing. And like Amos is like, we had very different childhoods. You know, it's it's moments like that. Just like one phrase. He does not need a monologue. He doesn't need to say this whole speech. I mean, even as a little boy, he didn't say anything. There wasn't one word that that little boy said. And, and he doesn't have to. You know, his eyes, his mannerisms, they speak for himself. Like, it's just. It's amazing how Amos could be my favorite character and he doesn't have those big monologue moments. You know, uh, if I, it's, mm, mm, click, click. <laughs> look, look, I didn't like Melba to begin with and I certainly didn't like Clarissa at all. And maybe Peaches will be different. Oh my God, I can't believe she's going to be back. I can't believe Clarissa Mao is like a character in which I have to like endure because people said that they like love peaches. F, 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 F. Ah, I'm going to have to put up with her. And, and like, I'll just say like, I'm open to actually even liking her. I just am like not looking forward to like actually having to be like, forgiving <laughs> and extending that kindness towards her. I don't know if that'll even be the case, but I do know this. Um, the more I learn about Amos, whether it is through her, whether it is through these memories, whether it is through just having this brief conversation with Eric, you know, like knowing that his real name is Timothy. And he does, he has, he has a tattoo on his arm. I like, I forgot what it was, but he had the camera guy, what's his name, Cohen in a headlock and I paused it 
And I was like doing something. I looked back and I was like, why does he have a tattoo that says like Tim something on it? And I was like, what the hell does that mean? And I had sent the screenshot to Xander and I was just like, I was like, what is this tattoo? Because most of the time it just like looks like regular symbols or like belter symbols or something. And I don't even question it, but like it was a name. It was like words on his body. It's like really interesting. I don't I don't know if that's like something that's been fleshed out on the show or not, but I noticed it when he had Cohen in a headlock. OK, so drummer. Thankfully, the episode started with her because <laughs> I was going to lose my mind and I still didn't get my like closure or my morning moment. I mean, now she is going after the Tynan. Um, I'm sure that the message from his communicator was received. Um, but I, I don't know if if there's a body that you ever find when somebody's spaced. Space is far and wide and big, and I highly doubt that you can find people easily. And it seems like she's kind of being a pirate to other pirates, um, like stopping them, but still taking, you know, stuff from from other people. Um, that sucks. I I wish she had gotten out of that lifestyle, but I guess here we are. <laughs> It seems like she has a good crew. It seems like they get along really well. They have a good time. They, they like she was kind of like letting loose a little bit. Um, it was nice to see her. It really is. And and I and now that I know that she's going after the Tynan, obviously, you know, she wants to do something about what happened to Ashford. If like and she didn't say anything about Ashford being dead. It's just she just mentioned his ship and she didn't think that she would find it. I'm really surprised, though, that Marco, like, left Ashford's ship, like, afloat, that he didn't destroy it. Um, it seems like something that you would do if you just space somebody, that you would destroy their ship. And we saw also that there was a satellite that, um, like, catches, or, like, uh, finds asteroids. And although they didn't show it, like, there was, like, all of a sudden, like, this cloud that appeared off to the side of the screen. And I think that that meant that was the ash asteroid, like, going through. And we couldn't even detect it. <laughs> At least I couldn't detect it. I didn't see it in the scene. Maybe it's there. Uh, I have rosé goggles on, I think. I don't... I, I'm not even... I've, I've had, like, a half a bottle, and I'm fine. I really... Maybe it's, like... It's like when you take certain medications for anxiety. Like if you don't have anxiety, it's going to make you fall asleep. If you have anxiety, it just makes you feel normal. So maybe that's kind of what it is, is that I, I was highly anxious and um, feeling my emotions. And all it did was make me feel normal. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I didn't see a damn asteroid. And that's how great the stealth tech is, I guess. Now, I knew Bobby would end up bringing Alex into the fold when it came to a lot of the the, the black market uh, Martian gear. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot. And and I'm not surprised that when he went to talk to... Um, when Alex goes to talk to Sauvater, like... <laughs> He seemed to take it really personal that he does not like Alex. Uh, he doesn't like what Alex has done. He doesn't like that he was doing um, a job for Earthers on a Mars ship. Uh, he's not impressed. And then you have Lieutenant Babbage, who like seemed to be really excited to talk to Alex. But I don't know if it's necessarily for Savitaire or if it is because she actually wants to know about what has been going on <laughs> or, or, or what happened with the ring or what uh what more she can learn from alex because she seemed really excited like he seemed kind of like she she kind of played it off like he was kind of a celebrity and he's like yeah i was just at the right place at the wrong time or wrong place at the right time either way um i didn't really think that we were gonna get a whole lot from <laughs> monica like i was like oh it's just a an appearance again i thought she was gonna cause like a lot of trouble for holden um what which i mean I would say that this was trouble for Holden, um, but trouble for herself. Like, like whatever she knows, somebody wanted to keep her quiet. Also, if somebody knew that she had information, it would be really smart to hide her somewhere and make them come get her. So then you know who she's working with. Um, Fred Johnson, Bull and Holden. I don't like Bull a whole lot. Um he's just grating. I think it's too much. It's like there's so many great acting moments in this show, and I'm just like, I don't know if it's the script or the way this guy's delivering the lines, but meh. 
I, 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 I just feel like like either he's a bad actor or he's just not really a good guy. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, but uh, not, not really super impressed by, uh, by Bull. Now Christian having that meeting and uh, Nancy Gao like. 100% if the tables were turned, that would be Christian talking to Nancy that way. So while I could be like, Nancy's a bitch because like we love Christian, I'm also kind of like, mm, yeah, that's kind of what you would do. So how the turns have tabled or however the kids are saying it these days. I always say how the tables have turned, but that's not how they were saying it on the Tiki Talk these days. Anyway, it's really nice to actually Christian like being civilian and like going to a bar and like hanging out with Delgado and having a conversation like she's not the person that's in charge and no one's coming to her really for answers on this issue. And that's not why she's on Luna. <laughs> so like she's got this her own investigation that's going on uh, that she's looking into and bankrolling for Bobby. Um, and she's also not talking to Arjun and she has a daughter. Like, when did that happen? Like, we're in season five and I just now find out she has another kid. I thought Chern Paul was the only one. Is that his name? I'm horrible with names. I barely remember my own name half the time. But like, where did that come from? Like, all of a sudden she's got two kids. She had a daughter this whole time. Never saw her during the election. What a horrible daughter. She didn't even help her mom. Um, I, I, the, the trouble with Arjun, I think would be easily fixed if she just left Luna and quit her job, but that's not our Christian. And quite frankly, I, 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 mm, I don't think Arjun would want a Christian not doing this job. I think very much he wants her to be doing this job because she's good at it and it takes up her time and she won't pick at him. <laughs> now we didn't get anything about Naomi, nothing about Philip. Nothing about Marco, which is fine because we needed to catch up a drummer. I will I will take a, a, a drummer catch up over uh, like just like little tidbits of information. Save it for the next episode. It's fine. Uh, but Holden really not wanting to to help Monica and then kind of regretting it a little bit. You know, like he can't he can't stay out of it like he's holding. He's got to figure it out, especially when it comes to the proto molecule, because he is the most uh, he's the guy that you, you go to for that information because he's handled it the most. He's been involved with it the most. He's been affected by it the most like like he has been front and center for the proto molecule. So he is the person that you want to go to if you have information. If you're scared, somebody's going to use it like like de definitely Monica went to the right place. And I think he just kind of like wants to like wash his hands of it. But he knows he can't. If there's still the sample out there, it's still out there. So he he's going to, you know, especially now this thing that happened with Monica, like he's going to be involved. He's going to get involved. So I need to get to know drummer's crew unless they die. Then I don't need to. But I, I feel like I need to. Um, I, I think we might be done with Earth. So I don't know if Eric appears again or not. Um, but that was an interesting interaction. Um, like he had no problem helping out Charles. Like he he seemed relieved that that's all that Amos wanted. And I don't know like what else he was expecting. A fight. Amos to take over. I don't I don't know. Um, I, I, if if the Earth storyline with Amos is done, that's fine by me. Um, because I feel like that place is only pain and bad memories and, and trauma and things that will, will trigger him in a way that is negative. <laughs> like when you go through therapy, it triggers you, but not negatively. It helps you work through the things that have happened to you. When you go back to the place in which the trauma happened, sometimes it's not good, mostly because you don't have a therapist there to walk you through it. Um, but he definitely has those more uh, human moments. Now, especially with Charles, it was so lovely to see him kind of go from kind of like a dick, very dry, very Amos, to like, let's have that cup of tea. Like, let's sit down and talk. Because uh, I think he realized that Charles was hurting, which is kind of a big thing for, for Amos to like see that. When Lydia says, when life hasn't treated you with kindness and it takes strength to do the right thing anyway.
such a great line. Mm. Okay. I'm I'm gonna sit here and 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 wallow and cry. Um I don't think I have enough information yet on um uh, what what's going on yet with Monica, who is really behind that. Um I would imagine somebody from Dawes, maybe not from Johnson, but from Dawes' side. Um what does Drummer do once she finds the Tynan? Um I thought she was gonna be on a warpath, like hell bent on on finding Marco and taking him out. Um, but maybe she doesn't know until I get that confirmation. I don't know what to do about it. Uh, Amos, of course, is going to go see somebody. <laughs> I promise I'll be open to it. I just don't like it. Uh, Holden now, I think, is going to be like really working with Monica to figure out this protomolecule issue and and like what's going on with it. Now that we know that there's just kind of like the one sample and that Fred Johnson has it. Uh, I mean, there might be samples of the word that I don't know, but the one that we know of, I think that's the only one we know of is the Fred Johnson sample. It's going to be like a, a mystery on Tycho Station of like a who done it or who's going to do it. Um, and figuring that out. Um, and I, I enjoy Monica now like this, but like, don't be coming on to my men's. I don't like it. Um, Christian and Bobby and now Alex are, are working on Mars and, and trying to figure out who's the leader of this. Who's the one that they need to go to is, is it this, this oh fucking name is this solitaire guy, you know, uh, a dirty, um, you know, is, is it his aide? You know, she seemed to like, kind of like see Alex and be like, hmm, problem. And then wanted to come talk to him. And I don't know if she's genuine in the fact of like, she wants to actually sit down and have coffee with Alex and talk to him about the ring gates or if something nefarious is afoot. Um, and uh, I, <laughs> I would say something nefarious is always afoot. Our crew has a way of stepping into shit sometimes, all the time, all the time, all the time. Uh, but I enjoy it. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I know next episode, we're probably going to have Naomi and Marco like separately, not together. But uh, I'm <laughs> I again, like like Marco makes me nervous. And the like the past two episodes, I was expecting like heavy Marco twitching his mustache, you know, like, like cooking up a plan to destroy the whole solar system. Um, and and we haven't really gotten any of that. So I don't know if they're just easing me in to just beat me. <laughs> I, I feel like it's coming. I feel like the boom will be lowered and uh, it's it's going to be, it makes me nervous. Just the whole season. I'm on edge. I've been on edge to watch this whole season, especially um, like even my boss, I think, I think he watched like five, five or something. And like, was just like, 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 how, how far are you in the expanse? Oh my God. Like, like, I have to talk to you about this episode. I have to talk to you about this season. I have to talk, and like, and he was in the fifth season. So, you know, like, uh, when, when somebody is <laughs> shaking cause they're so giddy, uh, trouble, trouble head. I'm sure of it. A hundred percent. I don't know why. Like I normally don't get anxiety about watching things. I'm normally excited and I get anxiety because I feel like, like my heart's going to get ripped out of my chest somehow, like it did at the end of season four, <laughs> like, like it did when Miller died, like it did, you know, like just, it didn't get ripped out of my chest, but like, like, uh, Amos being that guy, like there's like so many moments where I was just like, like, I can't take this. I can't take this. I can't take this. That's how much I care about these, these people. Okay, guys, if you want to watch the full length reaction to this episode, it will be available on my Patreon, uh, as well as up to two episodes early. Also, uh, shows like Andor, huh, I got back to it. <laughs> um, those will be up there early, as well as the full length reactions, Fox Machina, House of the Dragon, soon to start The Last of Us and Severance um, at some point. Uh, the Bad Batch will also be available, and uh, the new season of Vox Machina starts uh, at the end of January. So... We've got a lot on our plate. Uh, I'm excited. There will be movie reactions, The Glass Onion, as well as John Wick 3. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, <laughs> and also get not notifications set. That way you get uh, notified whenever I post anything. There's a lot of shit that went up this week. Let me tell you, the, the past couple weeks, it's just been like, boop, 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 boop
it's a great place to be, but it's exhausting at the same time, but it's really exciting. I love every minute of it. Whew. I really thought the churn was going to hit me a lot harder, but there was, there was definitely moments that got me. Um, damn. Damn. Every, every season has been different so far. Every single one. Um, I'll tell you, uh, three still sits really high on, on, on my scale of like, yeah, <laughs> I really like three. Um, I really liked three, six. Yep. Probably my favorite episode. Eh, three, two Delta V as well. You know what? I think all of those are season three. So drop it down below. Don't tell me why necessarily. What was your favorite season? I don't think a lot of people are going to say four, but I will say, even if four wasn't your favorite season, it's still the least favorite season in a show that is better than so many other shows that like, it's still just glorious. <laughs> At least that's what I got to say about it. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll see ya.